Hi folks, it's George from Envy. It's a chilly January day today. It's not quite the weather for enjoying the pond just yet, but um, it will be soon. Uh, so we're here today to equip you with the knowledge you need to keep your water clear and healthy. And one of the best ways you can do that is by monitoring your pond parameters. So when you first start looking after a pond, the parameters side of things can be quite daunting. I mean, you might not have even heard of pond parameters. It can get quite technical, but really once you get your head around it, it's quite straightforward. Um, and it is one of the most important factors to a successful pond. So it's worth looking at. So there are five key parameters that we're going to look at today and then some additional ones that are worth looking into as well. But the first one and arguably the most important one to look at is pH. So pH is really simple. It's essentially how acidic or alkaline your water is. And it's measured on a numeric scale from one to 14, with one being really acidic and 14 being really alkaline. So you want your pH to be between 7.5 and 8.5. And we recommend that for a variety of reasons, but the main one being that at most fish's natural blood pH is about 7.4. Um, we're going to show you how to test for these levels, all these levels, including pH and the ones I'm going to talk about after. Um, we're going to show you how to test for them and we're also going to show you how to get them to the right levels if they're not right. The KH is the next parameter to look at and KH is really simple. It's just the amount of carbonate minerals in the water. It's, it's sometimes referred to as the total alkalinity. It acts as a bit of a buffer for pH swings, which is where the pH of your pond will dramatically and quickly reduce from alkaline all the way down to acidic. So in terms of levels for KH, you want that to be between 90 ppm and 150 ppm. And ppm means parts per million. You can also convert that to five to eight degrees hardness. So you've probably heard the phrase hard or soft water before. Uh, you may live in a hard water area or a soft water area. And what this is referring to is the general hardness or the GH. Um, and when it comes to your, your pond water, uh, it's worth looking at the GH as a parameter. GH is the amount of calcium and magnesium that you have in there. So you usually don't need to worry about GH too much, um, but it's worth knowing the level that we recommend. And that, and that would be one, 140 ppm to 220 ppm. Again, ppm being parts per million. And this is otherwise known as eight to 12 degrees hardness. So the next three parameters that we're going to talk about, we've combined because they make up what's called the nitrogen cycle. Now, again, we're not going to get too technical here. It's really straightforward. Essentially, any fish waste in your pond, any debris or anything like that that gets in there, that'll break down into ammonia. And ammonia in high levels can actually be harmful to your fish and to wildlife as well. So nature does its work on this and breaks that ammonia down into nitrites and those nitrites then become nitrates. Any pond plants that are in there will absorb those nitrates and any dead plants will re-enter the cycle as ammonia. So what does all this actually mean for your pond? Well, really, you, you don't want any ammonia or nitrites in your pond. I mean, you can get away with around 0.5 ppm, um, but that's about it. Anything higher than that, that's something to, to, to look into. Nitrates, you can get away with about 25 ppm, up to 25 ppm, but really you want it as low as, as possible. Pond plants are a really good way of reducing the amount of nitrates because they will naturally absorb them. So you can keep, if you have plenty of pond plants, you can keep them to, uh, keep the nitrates to a decent level. Another good way of reducing your nitrates is to, to perform a water change. And essentially all that would consist of is taking around 10 to 20 percent of the water out of your pond and topping it back up obviously using some sort of dechlorinator. Depending on the size of your pond water changes can be quite difficult um, and obviously if you're having to do it regularly then it can be quite cumbersome so we're going to talk about some different ways of, of actually reducing nitrates a, a, a lot easier uh, a bit later on in the video. So now we've talked about each parameter we're going to look at how to actually test these levels. In terms of knowing whether these parameters are off or not, it's, um, it, it can be quite difficult to tell visually. One way you can tell is if your fish are gasping for air, if they're coming to the surface, that can indicate a problem with either ammonia or oxygen, and oxygen we're gonna talk about a bit later on, but um, that's really the only way visually that you can see that there may be a problem with your pond parameters. The best thing to do really is to test them regularly, and you can do this really easily with uh, test strips. Now we have our own pond test strips 
here. These are the brand new MV POM test strips. Uh, and these test for the five key parameters that we've talked about. So that's pH, KH, GH, uh, nitrites and nitrates. So they're really easy to use. You just dip them in the water for a few seconds and take them out and compare the colors on the strip to the color chart on the back of the packet. And if you do this every one or two weeks, you'll have a really clear idea of, of how healthy the pond water is. So now you know what the various pond parameters are and you know how to test the levels, we have quite a few solutions for you to get them to the healthy and safe levels that they need to be at. So the first product we're gonna talk about is Pond Equalizer. And Pond Equalizer essentially buffers all of those parameters to where they need to be. And it does this really quickly. All you do is scatter it into your pond, use the right amount for uh, the, the volume of your pond. And you don't need to be worried about whether they're low or high or anything like that. Even if you don't test for, for the parameters. If you're using Pond Equalizer regularly, um, you'll know that the, the water is safe and healthy. Second product we want to briefly share with you is MV Nitrate Clear. And this goes back to the nitrogen cycle we were talking about earlier. Nitrate Clear contains bacteria that will actually target those nitrates in your pond. So if the, if the nitrates are at a really high level, uh, Nitrate Clear will work to reduce those. As you can imagine, this is much easier than performing those water changes that we talked about. And the final product worth mentioning here is uh, filter feed. So this again utilizes our trusty bacterial formulation. It targets ammonia nitrites in your filter before they build up in your pond. Again, really easy to use, just drop a tablet into your filter um, and you're good to go. All these products again, obviously are safe for fish and wildlife. Um, no harm whatsoever, bacteria based. And if you want to find out more about them, you can head over to our website or click the links above or in the description of the video. So if you've watched this far, uh, first of all, thank you. Um, and second of all, you now know probably about 80% more than most people with ponds. It can be quite overwhelming when you first hear about all of these things in terms of pond parameters, but we just recommend reviewing this video as often as you need to, cutting back to the various sections um, so that you know you, you can confidently maintain uh, the, the healthy water parameters in your pond. Now, we want this to be a complete guide, so we are gonna go into a few more things, but if you do wanna just come back to it later, that's absolutely fine. But otherwise, we're just gonna round this off with some final key points. So one of the last things we want to go through is chlorine. Now chlorine, when it comes to ponds, doesn't particularly serve that much of a useful purpose. It's, um, it can be quite harmful to fish, uh, but you want it to be, you know, any more than 0.5 ppm is, is something to, to be concerned about. It also kills good bacteria in the pond that, that work to keep the water clear. So the only way chlorine level is going to be high in your pond is if you're adding tap water. So when you do that, just make sure to use the chlorinator. We have one here called Chlorine Clear. Again, that's really simple. It's just going to ensure that the chlorine levels uh, are safe when you're performing a water change. Another good way of reducing the amount of chlorine in there is, is using a watering can with a rose, especially in direct sunlight, because this can burn off some of the chlorine that's going into the to water from those droplets. So in terms of oxygen then, I mean, Obviously, this one goes without saying. It's the reason we didn't mention this is that the first and most important parameter is really that you shouldn't have to worry about oxygen too much. As long as uh, you have some movement in the water, your oxygen level should be fine. But in terms of a number, really, it's got to be around six milligrams per litre of dissolved oxygen in your, in your pond. A good way of keeping healthy oxygen levels is to use an air stone or a fountain. Your fish will be much healthier and the water will be much clearer if your oxygen is at the appropriate level. So the final parameter we want to cover is phosphate. So phosphate can be more of an obscure one. It might not be one that you've heard before. Essentially phosphate comes from the sludge and organic waste in your pond. If you've got too much of this, your pond water can start to become murky. Um, you can get things like algae and green water. Ideally, you want no more than about 0.05 ppm of phosphate. You want to keep it as low as possible. So phosphate is one, again, that you don't need, usually need to worry about too much. That's why we're mentioning it a lot later on in the video. And so our test strips don't actually test for it. You can get ones that do, but again, 0.05 ppm uh, should, be, should be fine in terms of phosphate levels. So the best way of keeping phosphate levels low is to clean your filters regularly. Um, 
cleaning your filters is really the only way all that sludge and organic waste is going to come out of your pond. So we do have videos on cleaning your pond filters, so if you need some advice on doing that, um, you click the link on the screen now. It's probably also worth looking at our complete guide to pond sludge um, in terms of phosphate levels as well, as we'll go into that. So I hope this video has given you a bit of an insight into pond parameters in general um, and how to, to measure for them, how to test for them, um, and also how to, to fix them if they're not at the right levels. If you do have any questions, we do have a support team on hand uh, to help you and you can contact them via email, telephone, or the live chat on our website. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. gone off so I'm open. I don't know when it went off. <laughs> Should have brought my headband. Well I feel like that would look even more ridiculous. <laughs> your, your pond water is at healthy safe level. No that's not right. <laughs> uh, fix. That's them 40 mile an hour gusts. So that bit's fine now. Yeah.